Italian dancer Federico Bonelli, principal dancer of the Royal Ballet in London since 2003. Tell us the beginning of all it. Well, I joined the company um, in 2003, and obviously I knew the company because I um, had seen lots of videos. Actually, when I was a student, I used to watch videos of Anthony Dowell and Macarva dancing Swan Lake with the Royal Ballet. So, in a way, it was a, a bit of a dream come true to, to come here. Um, another thing that I remember with a lot of um, happiness is uh, dancing with uh, Miyako Yoshida, a former principal with the Royal Ballet, whom I also used to watch in videos of the Royal Ballet. So um, it was a little bit, you know, how this thing happened by chance that I managed to join the company, but definitely was a very important step in my career and in my life. But did you always know that you wanted to be a dancer since you were a kid? I think so, I, since I was quite young anyway, even though I didn't know what being a dancer meant when I was, I think I must have been 10 or 11, and I, I remember actually a, a moment walking to school in the morning thinking, I really hope I can become a ballet dancer, I really hope I can get into this professional ballet school. Uh, obviously at the time it was, for me, ballet was just what I did in my local ballet school. I had no idea about these big productions and big dramas on stage. Uh, but obviously, it's been a, a nice journey of discovery as I got older. How do you prepare yourself before you go on stage? So, um, if I'm playing a role where I'm actually telling a story, obviously um, it's a preparation that lasts quite a long time. You know, the rehearsal is not just for the uh, technical part, which is obviously very important, but also for the um, character, characterial part of the, of the role. So, I talk about it with uh, my partner, um, ballet partner, but even with friends and uh, people that I trust, obviously my coaches help a lot, the director of the company, and, um, and so I start to build a picture of how I want to depict the, the character. And, um, and so I try to, um, to understand what I want to tell uh, the audience. Then obviously the day of the performance, how I prepare the day of the performance is usually uh, before the performance I don't do very much at all, it, probably I do class in the morning and then Rarely we have rehearsals also during the day, but I prefer when I, I can actually concentrate on the performance in the evening and I do a, a lot of visualization. That is when you close your eyes and you uh, go through uh, parts of the uh, ballet, some of the steps, uh, so then you are basically mentally rehearsing what you do. And uh, then when I go on stage, I think of the now, I try to have a narrow concentration and uh, I try to enjoy it. So you're born in Genoa, training to dream at the Dance Academy with both Italian and visited Cuban teachers? That's right, yes. So my, um, I went to a private school um, in Turin, but also in my um, local hometown, which is Casale Monferrato, where I grew up. Um, and um, the private school had uh, this wonderful idea, in my opinion, to uh, uh, basically hire some Cuban teachers. So these uh, teachers would come from Cuba and stay in Italy for quite a long period of time, one or two years, and teach at the school. And so throughout my career, I had uh, both, um, it was a combination really of this uh, human school and the Italian teachers of the, of the ballet school. And um, I think I've been very lucky because I, I think it was a good um, tuition, well, let's say. I, they taught me well, I, if I might say. No, of course. So you graduated at Zurich Ballet in 95, right? Right, and that was my first company, the first company right. as a professional dancer. And then you moved to the Dutch National? That's in correct. <laughs> And then promoted as a principal in 2002. Uh, now you are at the Royal Ballet. Uh, each one of these plays must have a different technique. How do you cope with all these different styles? Well, you're absolutely right. There are very different styles and techniques in most companies. But definitely the three where I've worked, um, I can really, I, I know they're different. And so basically what you do, I, I believe, is um, trying to remain truthful to uh, your roots and to what you know, but you still try to learn the, the, uh, the style of the company. Um, I would like to think of myself as a Royal Ballet dancer now, um, since I've been here for quite a long time now and I've, I, hopefully I've learned uh, the, uh, you know, the base and the, the, uh, the style of the company. And there are lots of very good things and basically you, I think I try to uh, mix them uh, together. So obviously what I've learned at Dutch National, what I've learned at Zurich Ballet, I, I didn't forget, you know, it's part of my personality and so I, I keep it with me. 
I just try to put it all together and obviously I select what I think is best, you know, as we all do, I guess, and uh, try to make the best of it. Is that why in 2005 you became the third man to dance Armand, only after Nureyev and Jonathan Coe? Well, there was a, a very big opportunity for me. I was very young. Uh, it was a very intense period of work. Um, to be honest, who knows? Maybe I don't think I did it quite right that first time. I've danced it since. And hopefully I, I developed in, into the role. Uh, it's a very nice role. And, um, uh, well, that's another one. You know, we were talking about roles. I remember reading um, the, uh, the novel. And I remember being so upset, so really hungry with the father and what he, he tells Marguerite to make her leave her mount. And so that, that is another role that I really enjoy playing, uh, that I feel close to my heart. But how does it feel to be compared with those two legends? And obviously there is a third one in front of me in the making. Well, I, I, you know, when you're dancing, you try not to think too much about that. Obviously, it's, um, uh, how do you say, I feel honored to be compared to these uh, wonderful names. But at the same time, you have to learn, but do your own thing. And that's what I try to do. What are your strengths and your weakness in the roles you play? Well, I can tell you, uh, it's, it is quite a personal question, but I can tell you what I think are my strengths and weaknesses as a dancer. Um, I've been lucky with um, uh, the figure that I was born with. Um, I, I'm told that he, that he looks uh, the part for some roles on stage. Obviously, I guess one of my strengths is that I keep working on, on not just my figure, you know, but also my technique. And I, I always try to improve myself. I honestly believe that that is important in uh, any profession, but definitely for a ballet dancer, to always try to move forward and to improve your dancing in this case. So I would like people to say that that is one of my strengths, always try to, to get better. So would you like to add some modern repertoire to your collection of roles? Yes. I mean, we do um, do a fair amount of modern repertoire, but I'm always open and uh, interested in working with other people. Just now, uh, there is a, uh, a dancer from Rumber Ballet, which is a modern company, who's also a friend, and we are discussing about um, doing something together. I mean, choreograph, he would choreograph something for me. Um, so I won't say anything because it's just, we talked about it uh, very recently. But yes, I'm always open to, uh, I think, uh, ballet is such a great art because it's so, diverse, right? And so I, I never liked um, uh, putting limits on what I can do. You've been a judge in many competitions. What do you look for in a new dancer? Right. So when I... Competitions have slightly different um, ways of judging the people. Some competitions judge them um, how they are at the moment, uh, on the moment where they perform. And, and then obviously you try to give your honest opinion about who is the best, who is the most enjoyable. And there are many things that you look for, obviously technical capabilities, but also artistic, artistry and musicality. But then there are other competitions that look at the potential. So for instance, I've been fortunate to be a judge at the Prix de Lausanne, at which I have participated as a, as a competitor when I was younger. And the Prix de Lausanne is very special because they look for potential. So a, a, a student might be a, a rough diamond. And so they try to uh, direct them towards good schools that will give them the opportunity to be refined. What would you suggest to a young guy that wants to take into your, that wants to follow your full step? Well, that you need to like it a lot because it can be frustrating. Um, obviously, it's, you're, it's almost like you're putting all your eggs in one basket, you know, you really want to make it in, ball, in the ballet world and it's not easy. I've been very lucky with, in my career. I've, managed to do a lot of the things that I wanted to do, uh, had a lot of satisfactions, is not always the case. So you really need to have this passion to drive you forward. It is a beautiful art, um, but it requires a lot of work. It gives you back a lot at the same time. So what is the in the pipeline next, apart from becoming a father? Well, that is quite a big thing in the pipeline, I have to tell you. And uh, so the next thing would be, how am I going to manage uh, my own workload would also be the father, right? Work. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a journey of discovering in the next uh, few years. Um, so I, to be honest, I've got some beautiful roles coming up. I'm dancing Onegin, Don Quixote, 
uh, Swan Lake down the line. We, we have a new production, uh, a full evening production with Wayne McGregor. But if I'm totally honest, <laughs> what I'm thinking the most right now is uh, about my daughter coming at the end of January. All right, well, we wish you all the best. Thank you very that. much. Happy New Year. Same to you, thank you.